Hello, attackers, and welcome to a brand new episode of Attack On Show. I'm your host, Robbie. We've got a great new episode for you today. In studio, we have the director of Roadrunner, Jason Allen, is here, and he's going to give us the inside scoop on his upcoming independent film releasing in February. Also, we're going to check out I Miss My MTV with a wicked track from the Warbly Jets. You're going to want to hear that. But we got to kick things off with Movie Maniac Minute. So let's start the clock. With the immediate success of Bad Boys for Life, there are already talks of Bad Boys 4 being put into production, and Chris Bremer will be returning to write the script. And speaking of Chris Bremer, Disney announced that they are moving forward with National Treasure 3, with him on board to write that script as well, and Jerry Bruckheimer is returning to produce. Over on Amazon, they have passed on the pilot of the Dark Tower series. So who knows if maybe another streaming network will pick that one up. In Disney Plus original programming, it looks like the Turner and Hooch series is going into development and looking at filming in April over in Vancouver. In other Disney Plus news, if you're a fan of Jeff Goldblum, you can rejoice. Season two of The World According to Jeff Goldblum has been signed. So more adventures to come our way with that. And in final Disney news, it looks like the merger between Disney and Fox is complete. They are going to be removing Fox from the studio titles. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time I've got for Movie Maniac Minute. We hope you enjoyed the news. Make sure you like and subscribe below. And there's plenty more your way. This is Attack on Show. All right, as promised in studio, we got Jason Allen. Hello. Oh, the whole crowd's going crazy for you. <laughs> Jason, Thank you for having me. yes, of course. I'm happy you came. Uh, you are here because we're going to talk about a movie you got coming out shortly. Yes, called Roadrunner, correct? Yep. And uh, a, we'll we'll call it a tag on show exclusive, but it won't be out until you guys already release this. But you want to tell everybody you guys are going to come out with a release date on this finally? Yep. So uh, the f film is premiering at our, our Fell Peller Showcase on Wednesday, February 26th, at the Main Art Theater in Royal Oak. Fantastic. February 26th. So Roadrunner has a fellow attacker in it, Justin Mayne, correct? Yes, That's sure awesome. does. Why don't you tell everybody a little premise about uh, Roadrunner. It's like a 70s uh, psychedelic yeah. uh, joyride. Yep. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> psychedelic. Right, that's the first time I've heard that one. Um, yeah, so uh, Roadrunner is actually based off of a true story. Uh, with myself and my, grand, my late grandfather, actually. Um, but it's about a, uh, a guy who is living... Uh, <laughs> living lavishly in the uh, drug ring in uh, the 70s and uh, he's got a family and um, he's just been living it for living in it for way too long and it finally is starting to catch up to him yeah and uh, you know one thing leads to another and he needs to find a way to get out burning the candle on both ends yeah. it, it's interesting because yeah you do kind of have multiple storylines I got to see a rough cut of yep. this this is Probably the best part about hosting an attack on show. Yeah. I get these sneak peeks. before it comes it's out. Fabulous. This is great. <laughs> uh, I did see a rough cut, and I got to tell you, the you captured the look of the 70s like to a T. Uh, well, the you. color grading, um, everything from wardrobe. Thank I got to commend you on that because watching the, the movie, I... I mean, it literally felt like Detroit in the 70s, so you captured the look very well. Uh, this was... I did notice at the beginning, obviously, it says inspired on based on true stories. Yeah. So, who, I, is everybody in the, this, no, the so, movie real? No, um, so, just the main character, Danny, um, is played by Matt Zakel. Uh, he is based off of my grandfather. Um, and then the wife, uh, played by Aliana Maison. Both um, did a great Stacey. job. Yes. Um, and then uh, Monica, the, their daughter. Um, they're loosely based off of my family members. Um, but I kind of made it a little bit more, you know, <laughs> you want to be able to watch it with them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I always get curious on true stories of how much of it was true, how much of it was embellished. So is this kind of like a story that your grandfather had told you and then in your head kind of just took it and ran a little bit with it? Or did he tell you a lot of this? Uh, no. Uh, so, <laughs> um, my mother actually, I, I had heard about it a couple of times, but it was never something that he really ever talked about a whole lot. Okay. Cause Rightfully so, yeah, I guess. he wasn't the, uh, greatest guy ever. <laughs> if you watch the movie, you'll see why. But, um, uh, so I took a, like a couple stories that I knew we're all stringed to the same events and I kind of compressed them a little bit. Um, and I just, again, I made it a little bit more entertaining and, you know, 
yeah movie appropriate no um, it's excellent and then how long did it take you as far as the, the production of this film because you guys have been in post now for a little bit how long yeah. was filming how long have you been working on this project um i wrote it uh, february of last year so when this premieres it'll probably be about one year to the day i think that's fantastic um, yeah that I, when i wrote it um we filmed it pre-production took a while um just kind of getting you know locations and um you know, acquiring the wardrobe and all that stuff um but we filmed it in july august september and october um most of it was like all over the span of a week, but a couple of days kind of scattered. Okay. Just because of Some pickup shots. Stuff. Or... Yeah. And it's Michigan, so you never know what the weather's going to do. Yeah, we've, the weather was a big problem <laughs> on a lot of the days. So it would start raining and then it would stop. And yeah, I mean, because you guys, out. you did a lot of outdoor scene or shots in mm -hmm. this movie, yeah. a lot with the, the, the car, which yeah. I got to ask, where did you, who's, who's got this car? A secret. I can't tell it's you. A secret. We can't. Man, <laughs> almost broke the story. <laughs> that was actually uh, when we filmed with the car. Um, it was it was crazy. Uh, we <laughs> we uh, were filming. We filmed like most of the movie, and I almost didn't have the Roadrunner car okay. um, for it. Uh, like two days before. And I was like freaking out. And I was like, okay, the movie is going to be ruined Wait, now. Wait. So you wrote a script. Went in the pre-production. Yeah, had had filming scheduled. Yeah, but no car. Well, I had a couple cars. I was actually, <laughs> I was actually, I had kind of rewrote the script just in case. Okay, it fell through. Was it like going to be called Dodge Omni if it fell no, through? No, it's it still going to be called Roadrunner. <laughs> there's a few, there's a few elements in it that like I could have kept it the same. Okay, <laughs> um, it's kind of metaphorical in a sense as well. Right. But, um, no, I so. To like two days before um i had a guy the guy that whose car we ended up using is like yeah i can do it but i can't do it until september and i was like okay oh. great so that's awesome so we had to shoot um there's one scene in the movie um where they're uh, having this drug deal and uh we literally shot half of the scene from one angle and then like about uh two months later we shot from the, with the, the car in the background with, uh, with the uh, with the car in the background yeah that's which in that day it was it was raining like on and off and it was just oh, it was man. wild disaster yeah yeah that's a obviously good commitment from the actors too that's got that's mm -hmm. very appreciative to have them stay committed and come back that much yeah well, that much time later to... everyone that worked on this film i'm incredibly grateful for because i don't know it was it was grueling honestly it was a lot a lot of work a lot of hours put into it and I know everyone was just so helpful, and to, especially the, the cast. I, I, I'm so lucky that I had everybody that was yeah. in that that was in, um, in the movie because everyone just does such a phenomenal job. Definitely takes a team, and this is so you you wrote it, you self funded this. Yep. Um, did you do any like sort of fundraisers, or is this just no. uh, you're working so overtime? It was with, all uh, out of pocket, um, <laughs> and with uh, uh, my production company, Fellpeller Studios, um, we kind of just use all of the equipment that we had. And all the resources that we had, the people that we knew, um, and I actually only spent. This is one of the things I'm most proud of. The budget was only a thousand dollars. I saw that film. on IMDb. I was <laughs> yeah. blown away by that. Yeah. So a lot of it was just people doing it just because they love making. I thought movies. gas alone for the Roadrunner shots would have been. <laughs> no, and you know what? It would have been cheaper actually. But um, the, <laughs> when we were filming uh, the with the Roadrunner, the the uh, Roadrunner day. Um, uh, the, this guy uh, we, that used the car, he towed it down all the way to Wyandotte, and he lives all the way up in Owasso. Oh wow! Um, so it was a uh, it was a hike, but we ended up leaving his truck and trailer at this uh, bar where we filmed actually the movie at, and uh, it ended up getting towed. So a big but a big part of the budget for the movie getting was the me car, paying the car for the car the to get out of the impound. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. Were you done with them at least after that? Yeah, or, uh, it, yeah. Well, we didn't like, find out until we were wrapped. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, well, that's, at least it didn't happen like earlier on in the day. That's hilarious. So yeah. is this your, your second film as far as uh, going from script to, to filming uh, on this sort yeah. of level? Yeah, so I've actually um, I've done, this is my second uh, short film. Um, this one's more of a short feature film, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, because the runtime's going to be around forty about minutes, 40, forty-five minutes. Okay. About things where it's at now, um, but yeah, I did uh, a moment of sincerity. Was like this a short film, and I did this, my first like serious one. 
I've done a couple other like like stupid sketch like comedy sketches on YouTube and stuff. Who hasn't? But, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> Next thing you know, you're putting a green screen behind you and taking yeah. it serious. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and I've I've worked on like a whole bunch of other um, like sets and stuff okay. for other people too. So that was really kind of a big help and like seeing what I have done and what I did wrong, what I did right on my first short film and then working with other people and I kind of, you know, gathered all of the elements and just how to make a movie um, and kind of launch that into this one. And, and it was um, very beneficial. No, when it comes together, it's very well done. And then it's it's impressive to see what you're doing. And, and you mentioned earlier, uh, it's Fell Peller Studios. Yes. Uh, is a company that you guys just started up the, uh, was it this year? Yeah, t uh, 2019, we officially founded. Officially yeah. founded Fell Peller Studios. Yeah. Uh, and why don't you tell people kind of what, what is it that Fell Peller Studios does? Okay. Um, so Fell Peller Studios is a uh, indie collective, um, a film and media collective, and we're just a bunch of dudes that just love making movies um and we're, we're kind of just a, almost like a for hire crew okay um so for anybody that's kind of out looking to make their own movie um with like justin main's crow he just hired us to help pr uh, produce yes. that that's a um, big announcement we got a couple other projects that um, from other people in the works as well that have not been announced yet um but really we're just kind of out looking to make movies just because we love making movies and then um, kind of just making our own stuff in the process. So you guys do, as far as a production company, you guys kind of offer all services. Sound, yeah. you can help with editing, yes. uh, the, the sound editing. Yeah, anything you need, we can help you. <laughs> so if you're looking to make a movie, somebody could call you guys and just say, hey, I need some help in this aspect of the film, and you can just kind of yep. set up shop and help with that part of the film yep. and yep. move it on the way. Now, you did, you already segued there, but uh, you guys were signed. Feldpeller Studios is going to help produce... Justin Maine's The Crow fan film. Yes. Uh, is this is this kind of your launch project here? Is this your guys' uh, first go on a, uh, on a separate project other than your own? Yeah, yeah. Um, so other than our own projects, this is our first uh, kind of big claim to fame in terms of working for another, for a client, if you will. Um, so, but we've known Justin for a little while. Um, we've done, again, he's in Roadrunner. Um, yes. And we've done- uh, it's very mean in it. Yeah, he's the, he's the uh, antagonist in <laughs> antagonist. the film. Antagonist. He's a bad guy, so it's kind of interesting to see him get a little angry in that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, he hired uh, Matt Zakel, who's part of Fell Peller. Um, he's co-directing. Um, Nathan Moser uh, is doing the sound design for the film. Um, he just hired uh, Andrew Sosa, who's also part of Fell Peller. Um, he's going to be the camera operator on that. I'm doing production design. Nice. And so pretty much just everybody from Fell Peller is just going to be coming on and helping him from you know get from point a to point b i i, I get what he sees in watching roadrunner and the the attention to detail mm -hmm. was shown so well in that movie that i have total faith you'll bring it through even though you have not seen the crow um but well, you, have seen, have, you have seen it now you have seen it now but i'm a huge crow fan we did you know two episodes on it with justin I so know, uh <laughs> we're gonna be watching with very close yeah, to uh, with close eye here my work very closely. <laughs> no pressure but we will find you yeah no <laughs> We got it. Don't worry. It's going to be no. a good film. No, I'm excited. So beyond The Crow, what do you guys have down the pipeline? Uh, what do you got going? Anything you want to announce? Are you working on another follow-up film already? Uh, myself? No. I kind of take everything one project at a time. So this yeah. is once this is done, I'll be kind of moving on. Um, Matt Sakel. Sleep, maybe? Is, no. Yeah, I might. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to do that. <laughs> um, Matt Sakel's uh, writing a script called Someone Else um, that we're going to be kind of trying to work on coming up in the next year. Um, we're, we're kind of also doing like a lot of commercials, okay. like commercial work around the area for nice. people. Um, we just actually, this company five hole, we just did a commercial Make for a plug. Them. That's awesome. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> we just did a commercial for We're not them. ones for marketing here. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so other than that, like we've got a couple of things that I can't announce okay. yet. But <laughs> no, excellent. Um, and, and also I forgot to ask, uh, for after Roadrunner uh, goes to theaters, will people, people be able to view it elsewhere? Uh, not for a little while, no. So and do a film festival circuit run. Yep. So the kind of the, the point of of the short film, short feature film Roadrunner is um, to help launch a feature script that I have written also. Um, so I plan on after this. This is probably the only time you'll be able to see it unless it's at a film festival. So locally. get your tickets. Yeah. So get your tickets. Um, 
but I'm, I'm gonna be trying to tour it around, just around the country, and then just kind of get some buzz around it and show my future script. Right, this is a launch to a bigger yeah, story that exactly. you're working on. And what's the date again? Tell everybody when they can expect to see that in theaters. Uh, Wednesday, February 26th at the Main Art Theater in Royal Oak. Beautiful theater. Yeah, um, we've got uh, our, our Feldpeller Showcase. So it's gonna be four films. Oh, okay. Um, the first one is directed by Jordan Curry. It's called The Marauder. It's a little uh, like samurai, kind of modern samurai film. Nice. Um, the second one is one that we worked on with a close friend of ours, uh, directed by Shane Hillier, called Yellow Bellied Rat. Um, uh, then third, uh, Matt Zakel, who I've mentioned already, um, his film Harakiri. And then last is Roadrunner. Road Runner. Now, how long are the, the we said Roadrunner is going to be about 40 minutes. How long are the other three? Um, the other three are about 20-ish minutes. Each? Each, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, have you guys set a price point yet? Yeah, so it's going to be $10 for tickets. That's perfect. Yeah. I mean, you're nice getting a plenty of, of entertainment there, four different stories to be told. Yep. I think it's good value. I'm excited to see what happens with it. I can't wait to see it go around the circuit. Um, I I think you're going to have some success out there. So I, I I'm excited it. to see your growth. Um, we can't let you leave. Uh, obviously, we have a major segment to get to. Yeah. Um, it is your five questions to see if you achieve attacker status. Are you ready for this? I, I hope so. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm, I, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> So we're back, and this is uh, five questions to see if you achieve attacker status. Okay. Uh, Jason had mentioned before that he's an '80s fan, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put those '80s movies uh, knowledge skills to test here. I'm so ready. number one, would you rather party at Studio Fifty Four or Two Thousand One Odyssey Club, which you know the disco from Saturday Night Fever? Definitely. 2001 Odyssey Club. I love yeah? I, I love Saturday Night Fever. That's what, that's actually probably like one of my favorite movies. I'm not gonna lie. Nice. Um, I should have look up the club name because I could really? not. I did yeah, not remember I mean, the club small name. Small details that you know nobody's gonna remember <laughs> that. But the dance floor was pretty wicked. I yeah. think that'd be a lot yes. of fun. <laughs> All right, number two. Who was a better crime fighting duo, Tango and Cash? Or Art Ridzik and Ivan Danko, which was uh, Belushi and Schwarzenegger from Red Heat. <laughs> Have you ever I have seen to go it? with Belushi and Schwarzenegger, honestly. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. I look, I'm a big Belushi guy, too. So yeah. There's, there's, I always thought that was a fun yeah. movie. Yeah. Those there's two a couple back references to John Belushi and Roadrunner, too. Yes. <laughs> no, I did my homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. You got it. So uh, you're two for two. Okay. Uh, number three. What movie, uh, what movie car is the coolest car? So between these cars, which one is the cooler movie car? Okay. Uh, you have the Dodge MS4 Interceptor from Wraith. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah, yeah, okay. You've seen it? I have. Yeah. Oh, man, I tried to dig deep. Or uh, the Family Truckster from Vacation. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's an easy one. The Family Truckster from Vacation, definitely. Nice. Yeah, I love those movies. That wins. Although Wraith, man, that car was so unique yeah, at the was. time. It when was. It came out, it was my wicked. personal favorite movie car will always be the DeLorean for Back to the Future. Yes. Though. That, is, that is my number one favorite movie. It was too easy, though, to put yeah, that in there. Yeah, of course. You can't throw that one in there. <laughs> you win. The Truckster gets it. So, <laughs> three for three. Uh, number four. Who would you rather have as a high school principal? You can take either Mr. Rooney from Ferris Bueller's. Or Mr. Vernon from The Breakfast Club. They're both pretty mean. Yeah. So I don't know. Who would you um, rather put up with? Breakfast Club. Definitely. Mr. Vernon? Mr. Vernon, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rooney was Had those long tracking fingers. people outside of school, which is yeah. a little creepy. And yeah, I nowadays might, I don't know his method would work. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <Yeah. laughs> that takes it. Breakfast Club wins every yeah, time. So of course. congratulations. That's four for four. Nice job. Nice job. This one, you get to pick your own answer, and we'll see if it, oh. if it registers high enough. This isn't so 80s. I just thought it was funny. Okay. Uh, Nick Cage invites you over for dinner to watch one of his movies. Wow. Which movie do you pick? That's a tough one. Um, I'm not a big Nick Cage guy, so that would, yeah, that would be... You only have 78 <laughs> movies to choose from. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> um, I don't know. Face Off's a pretty weird movie. Yes. I'd say maybe Face Off or National Treasure 2. Book of Secrets. Really? You rate <laughs> yeah. the sequel better than the original? Yeah, I do. I don't know. It's just got a little different feel to it. It's kind of, you know, a big Abe <laughs> Lincoln fan. So <laughs> Nice. You know. Face Off was on the list, so that gets you qualified. Yeah. We would have Good. also accepted Vampire Kiss. I have uh, not seen that That was one. a fantastic movie. It has. <laughs> so you win. That's five for five. You get attacker status. Congratulations. 
Thank uh, you. You do get your very own Attack on Show glass for achieving attacker status and showing up in studio cool. today. Thank so you. there was a little bit on the line there. I didn't want to put the pressure on you. Yeah. Uh, you're already nervous enough as it was. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be yours. Uh, I'm not going to let you go yet. Uh, okay. Being a fan of the 80s, we have a segment here on Attack on Show, which is I Miss My MTV, mm -hmm. where we like to introduce new music to the fans out there. So okay. you want to stick around and hear the, the track we've got lined up? Sure. All right, so we're to. gonna we're gonna kick this over to I Miss My MTV. Let's do it. All right, so it's I Miss My MTV. Do you like music videos? Yeah, I yeah. love music videos. Who doesn't like music yeah. videos? Well, you can't find them anymore, which is why we have this segment on Attack On Show. Yep. So we're gonna help you guys find some new music, some cool bands that are out there. And this week, we're featuring the Warbly Jets. Uh, this is a cool unknown band. Uh, I actually got to see them open up for like Stone Temple Pilots uh, cool. during the summer. Cool. And these guys killed it. So I'm going to turn over. The song is called Propaganda. So hopefully you guys like it. It's a cool rock, 70s style. I thought it kind of fit the tone with uh, Roadrunner that we're featuring. Okay. So check out a minute of the Worldly Jets. All right, so that was the Worldly Jets. What did yeah, you think? It was it was uh, it was interesting. They have a very uh, I don't want to say retro kind of style. Yeah, to but it, it is but, like a throwback, like yeah. uh, '70s vibe kind of sound yeah. to it. I yeah, felt it like sounded like the Arctic Monkeys. Almost, like, yeah, kind of that's actually a great yeah. pick there. Yeah. Yes, it is very yeah. Arctic Monkeys. But yeah. funky enough, definitely check them out. It's on YouTube. The link is below. You guys gonna want to listen to that music. Uh, Jason, I gotta say thank you for coming yeah. on the show. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to Roadrunner. Guys, stay tuned. We're going to put links below so they can track you. Uh, yep. We'll even put the link. You guys have a link to buy tickets? Yep, yep. That's down below. So make sure you get your tickets. Also, while you're there clicking around, make sure you click like. And you're going to want to subscribe to the show, everybody, because we're bringing you all kinds of fun content. And it's a lot of work. So yeah. just click and subscribe. Rob's a great guy, it's too. Easy so. I appreciate that. Yeah. That was not scripted. <laughs> that I'll was give not. you the money in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, everybody, thank you for watching. As always, I'm Robbie, Jason Allen. And Jason, you want to tell them the name of the show? This is Attack on Show. Thank <laughs> you.